viewers, welcome to another news hour on Germany Media and Products. We now begin with our headlines. Supreme Court dismisses United Democratic Party review application. National Assembly election slated for April 9th. Media fraternity mourns death of colleagues Pamudufal and Musandau. Gender activist demands more seats in bill for women at parliament. People lamented bed shortage at Infant War II. Those were the headlines. We now have the news in detail. The Supreme Court presided over by Chief Justice Hassan B. Jalo and four other judges yesterday dismissed the application filed by the United Democratic Party for a review of the state court's earlier decision. The United Democratic Party recently filed an application before the Apex Court seeking for a review of its earlier decision delivered on the 8th December 2021 in which the Supreme Court struck out the party's petition against President-elect Adam Obaro, National People's Party, Independent Electoral Commission, and the Attorney General and Minister of Justice. The United Democratic Party alleged that the December 4th presidential election was marred with fraud and the Supreme Court should declare the same election results invalid. The Supreme Court on the 28th December 2021 struck out the said petition saying that the United Democratic Party did not comply with Rule 11 of the Elections Petition Rules. Earlier last week, the United Democratic Party filed an application for a review of its December 28, 2021 decision, but the court yesterday has dismissed the application and noted that it cannot review its earlier decision. The Independent Electoral Commission yesterday announced that it will conduct National Assembly elections on Saturday, 9th January 2022. The IEC also said nominations of the candidates for the election will start from 5th to 13th March 2022, from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. at its regional offices across the country where nomination papers will be available from 4th February. Election House said the campaign period for the election will commence on 17th March and end on 7th April 2022. The IEC announced that the following persons have been appointed as returning officer in the various regional administrative areas. Suleiman Juf Banjul, Joseph Koli Kanifing, Robert Atoni Seka Brikama, Esa Balde Kerewan, Lamin J. Jadama Masakonko, Amadou Tal Janjambure, Lamin Cham Basse. It was another dark day for the Gambia media fraternity as they mourned the death of colleagues, Pamo Dufal and Musandao. The death of the duo was announced through the earlier hour of Monday, 17th January. According to the news gathered, the two involved in ghastly accident with other staff of the Ministry of Health, Kausubayo. This sad accident took place in Jara Jifing. Both Pamo Dufal and Musandao had worked at the different daily observer newspaper before joining Ministry of Health. However, Pamo Dufal was yesterday led to rest at his residence in Lamin village, while Musandao will be led to rest today at his home in Babylon village, West Coast region. At the funeral of the late Pamo Dufal, the Minister of Information and Communication, Honorable Ibrahim Asilla, described him as one of the most respected Gambian journalists. With sudden heart, Honorable Silla said the demise of the two journalists is a huge loss to the country, saying it is difficult to lose three young people at the same day. Honorable, Honorable D.A. Jawa, former Minister of Information, as well said a tribute to the departed souls, especially Pamu Dijala, whom he said never do something without consulting him. Pamu Dufal was a longest serving executive member of the Gambia Press Union. He has contributed greatly towards the development of the union and press freedom in the country, Mr. Modu Jawa, a GPU executive member, disclosed. General rights activists have demanded more seats for women in the National Assembly in a bill that seeks to end law representation for women in politics. The rights group won 16 seats for women in the National Assembly, which will sit two seats for women in the seven administrative regions for the country. 
They also want lawmakers to set the speed up re reading of the bill and give it an approval before the upcoming National Assembly and local government election in April. Tabun Jaisar, president of Gender Platform, expressed hope of passing of the bill, of the bill, saying lawmakers have shown much interest after her team's engagement with political leaders to convince their mem members of parliament to approve the bill. Certainly because National Assembly members have shown so much interest in the bill and one thing she can say as of now is that this bill is for the women of this country and it will come to rectify the low representation of women especially in National Assembly and in the, and in the political party since independence, she said. According to her, the bill will be positive progress for the country, adding but also in a win of transitional justice program that the Gambia embarked on doing some reforms. Mrs. Njaisar, who is also the women rights manager at Action Aid the Gambia, added, they are hopeful and that it will pass and it's going to be celebrated of course because it's going to be historic in the history of this country which such an affirmative action has been passed in our legislation. And as she always say, gender equality is a win for everyone. It's not only for women, but for men, boys, and girls. They are praying that this will will be passed. The approach they take is not political or person or personal because they want to every, because they went to every political party leader requesting for support. So on a balance for everyone and any political leader can attest that so that they can talk to your national assembly members to ensure that they support this bill. They are very hopeful because they've taken the right approach and they've talked to people that matter and so far everyone has given a positive note to it. The proposal of the bill for 16 women, that's 14 drawn from the seven administrative regions. That's two seats for every region, which makes it 14 and two extra seats for people with disability, she explained. People accompanying patients at the Infant Ward 2 at the Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital in Banjul have lamented bed scarcity at the country's main referral hospital, something that forced two people shared one bed. The people made this disclose during a recent visit to the hospital by this reporter. Nyemande Fofana, who accompanied a patient, explained that she spent two weeks at the hospital and during this period she slept on the floor due to lack of enough beds. She observed that the way and manner these people are treat treating at the hospital calls for concern as the situation could even lead to so many health implications for the proper measures are not taken. Sari Bajaji, who also accompanied a patient, said with this reporter that she was sharing a bed with a friend at the hospital for more than one week without safety precautions. She indicated that looking at the current situation, it is very risky and that the hospital management is doing little or nothing to remedy the situation for the safety of all Gambians. Maria Masar, who also accompanied a patient, said during her last week's stay at the hospital, she slept outside of the hospital with her colleagues. Sleeping outside is very risky and we always have mosquito and we always have sleepless nights because of mosquito bites, which is not good for our health. Sometimes you can be sleeping outside and your patient is in urgent need of you and before the doctor or the nurse on duty will identify someone to escort the patient, it is always difficult for them to locate the person. Meanwhile, others who are also accompanying patients at the main referral hospital say have similar views and call on the government through the Ministry of Health to find a lasting solution to this, to this inadequate bed shortage at the country's main referral hospital. This they believe would significantly contribute to the well-being of people, especially those escorting patients. Those were the stories for our today's newscast, but before we take a leave of you, let's take a recap on our top stories. Supreme Court dismissed United Democratic Party review application. National Assembly election slotted for April 9th. Media fraternity mourns death of colleagues Pamo Dufal and Nusandao. Gender activists demand more seats in bill for women at parliament. People lamented bed shortage at infant war too. Those were the stories. Thank you for joining us. I am your presenter, Maria Magellan. Do have a nice day.